got a message for you today. The message is uh, on the subject of burdens. Any of you ever have a burden in your life? I mean, is there anybody, let me say it the other way, is there anyone that's never had a burden in your life? No problem, everything just goes along great all the time? If so, I want to talk to you. I want to get in on that. But I was thinking about burdens. And I think sometimes we just need to stop and give you a word of encouragement. And so we're in Galatians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. And I want to just make a comment as you're looking for Galatians chapter 6, and then we'll stand for the reading of God's word. So when you've found it, just stand. But I was thinking about, what do you do with burdens? And I was looking at this mom horse here. She's got this... I've never seen this before. She's got this colt that's got his uh, leg draped over her neck, and she's trying to eat with this colt hanging on top of her. And I thought, you can't always just shrug off your, uh, your burdens, okay? So we'll read this passage, see what it says to us. Galatians 6, Father, we ask you to speak now, and we, we pray that you'd show us what are we supposed to do when we're carrying a big burden and it's just pulling us down? It seems like we're getting weary with whatever it is that's troubling our life. And so we come before you now and ask, help us to see how you can help us to be relieved and to find rest for our soul. In Jesus' name, amen. It says in Galatians 6 verse 1, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he's nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For each one shall bear his own Lo, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. You may be seated. As I said, I think everybody has got burdens, and you can't always just shake them off. Sometimes it's physical, sometimes it's an emotional, sometimes it's a spiritual burden, sometimes you're suffering loss, it could be loss of a loved one, loss of a job, loss of health. Uh, some people struggle with self-worth. They just don't feel like their life is worth anything. And I have a word of encouragement for each of you in, in all of those areas. The truth is, all of us have burdens and all of us have problems, just not the same problems and not always at the same time. And burdens can get heavy to, to carry. I was reading a story about a Chinese woman who lost her son and she couldn't find comfort, so she went to a wise older man in her village and she asked him what she should do, and he said, go to a home that has no sorrow or grief, and bring back a mustard seed, and I will restore your son. Several days went by, and she went from house to house to house, trying to find somebody who didn't have any sorrow or any burdens in their home. When she returned to the man, she said, I have been so selfish in my grief. Sorrow is common to every home. So don't feel like you're the only one who's ever had a problem. God is the answer to this problem or question, what should I do with my burdens? And the first thing it talks about is restoring one another. Sometimes people are carrying a load of sin and guilt in their life. That's one kind of burden. And it says if a man is overtaken in any trespass, not some, any, you who are spiritual, if you're really a spiritual person, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. So when a fellow believer 
stumbles and falls into sin, rather than pointing out and, or, and accusing and talking about them to everybody, uh, we used to say shooting our wounded, uh, we're supposed to reach down to somebody who's struggling in life and let them know that Jesus can help them to find the right way back to be forgiven, to be restored, and uh, don't allow yourself to be tempted, or don't, you may be tempted, but don't fall into the temptation and, and start adding on to the sin by sinning yourself. Of course, no one is supposed to choose to follow a life of sin, but when one of us falls into a sin, or we think that, we need to pray up and we need to go to the person in love and with gentleness or meekness seek to restore the person to the right walk. And uh, so we ought to encourage one another uh, to get back on track, not to keep on and keep it on and whatever they're doing, but to get right. Second thing, humble yourself. Love others and rejoice. It says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, like, I'm just all that, that's what some people think, <laughs> when he's nothing, oh, <laughs> he deceives himself, but let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. You see, sometimes it's possible for us to get all puffed up and think we're above that. We would never sin. We would never do this, that, and the other. So we begin to think without even realizing it. We didn't intend to, to become prideful and arrogant, thinking we're better than others. Whenever you start thinking you're better than others, pride just got in your heart. And you cannot help other people when you're puffed up with arrogance and pride in your own heart. It can hinder you from being able to help others and it causes you to look down on others. And I don't know about you, but when people are looking down on me, it gives me a crank in the neck. You know, it's like they think they're better, so they're always looking down on me. You gotta look up. You know, I'm thinking, how about we just look eye to eye and say we're fellow uh, sojourners, we're fellow pilgrims, we're fellows that have been forgiven of, of much and we ought to love and forgive others much the same way Jesus would. If you think you're above others and you never need any help yourself, that's strange to me. <laughs> it just doesn't seem, it's not right. But you're not going to be helpful to help others, useful to help others to get free from sin. You see, if you see sin and you say, I need to do something about it, but then you think you're above that, and you start looking down, it's really hard to go to somebody else and help them. But when you go to them and you say, I'm a sinner also, saved by grace, and I know you're struggling with this, and I'm here to help you because I love you. That's a completely different kind of message than just looking down on people. It talks about fulfilling the law of Christ. To fulfill the law of Christ, what is that? It means to love one another as Jesus loves us. Uh, where do I get my text from? One text is John 13, 34. It's a commandment Jesus gives us. He says, I give you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. Well, you know that Jesus only loves those who haven't committed sin, right? No? Oh, that means he wouldn't love anybody, right? Jesus actually loves all of us. He does not approve of sin because sin caused him to have to go to the cross and suffer for us. Sin is destructive, it's harmful, it's painful, it damages relationships, it hurts people's life. But Jesus it loves us even in spite of our sin, and he took your sin and mine on himself and died for us while we were yet sinners. If that isn't love, I don't know what love is. That's an amazing love, that's the love of Jesus. We came to the table, remember his body that was broken for us, that's represented by the bread. We re remember the blood that was shed for us, that's represented by the cup. We come and we're supposed to remember that Jesus did this for us to set us free from sin, and that's all of us. We have a debt that we owe to him, and we can't pay it, he paid it for us. So that means you and I belong to him, he paid for us with his own life we've been 
the Bible words redeemed and redeemed from her sin. Remember the woman Ruth? She lost her husband and she was uh, experiencing grief and she also was a stranger and she went with her mother-in-law and she went back to uh, the family and she said, let me find favor in your sight, my Lord. She was talking to Boaz. For you have comforted me and have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. She was a foreigner in a strange land, and she went and expected to be rejected. She felt out of touch with the local people, and she was in a very low time in her life, and Boaz took up the responsibility to represent the person of Christ, and he comforted her in her time of sorrow. And, and, and I want you to listen to me. Why does God allow trouble come in your life? You listening? God allows sorrows to come into your life and mine so that we can be comforted by Him. And one way that He comforts us is through our brothers and sisters. You are members, if you're a Christian, of the body of Christ. So one of the ways that we're comforted is not mystically, but very practically by our brothers and sisters in the family of God. When we're going through a tough time, God sends our family to us to comfort us, to pray for us, to encourage us, sometimes to help us in very practical ways. And the reason He does that is not only to minister to our needs as members of the body of Christ, but He is always teaching us. And when He comforts us in this way, He's teaching us how we can comfort others in the same way we've been comforted. I don't make any of this stuff up. Look at this. 2 Corinthians 1, 4 says, Who comforts us, that's God, in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Stop and think about it. When you receive comfort, that's because you're bearing a burden of sorrow or loss or trouble in your life. And when God sends brothers and sisters to comfort you in your time when you're carrying a load, you're learning how you are to go and to comfort them when they're going through a hard time. So that's why you're allowed many times to go through suffering and sorrow it's the only way you're going to learn what it's like to be in need of being comforted and understood and prayed for and helped so you're able to help others. Got it? Okay, I hope so. Let me ask you again that. Got it? Okay, good. Got it. Alright, so do not waste trials and tragedies. God uses them to teach us how to comfort others. Got that? Okay. And everybody has them. Sometimes pastors, we get criticized for ignoring church members. And I want you to remember, I'm actually a person, <laughs> too. Sometimes we have a bad day. I try not to have bad days intentionally. I don't think any of you do either. Sometimes we carry burdens. And sometimes we're not comfortable to share our burdens with others because we always think, if I let anybody know the burden I'm carrying, what's going to be the result of that? They're going to say, the pastor has burdens. <laughs> the pastor has a problem. He doesn't feel good today. And sometimes we go through that. I've had people tell me they were in the hospital, but I didn't visit them. So I usually ask this question. I say, did you phone our secretary? No. Did you let someone know to call me? No. Did you leave a message on my cell phone? No. So then I have a secret to share with you. Oh, listen, I'm not that good. <laughs> it's like if you're, if you're in the hospital and you don't call me, I won't necessarily know unless somebody has to tell me. I can't read your mind. Some of you probably just have an illumination right there. I thought you could. I don't know. I'm using myself as an example. What am I really talking about? Not about me. It's about one another. When you're going through a trial, here's what I'm going to give you a tip. Call your brothers and sisters and say, I need a visit. I need a call. Could you bring a meal over? Could you just stop by and sometime? I just need somebody to talk to about whatever's going on in my life. Let them know. 
And if somebody calls you and says, I need you to come and listen, or I could use some help, or I don't know what to do, maybe two or three of you could come over and pray with me about this. You know what would happen? You'll grow closer to one another, and you'll become more of a real church family. And when things like that happen, it gives you an opportunity to let them minister to you, and you're also learning while they're ministering to you how you, when you get called, can go help somebody else the same way you were cared for. Okay, does it make any sense? This is what needs to happen. You guys need to call each other. If you call me and say, could you come over, I'm, I'll come. If you don't call me, I might come, but I might not know. So uh, don't assume I just know where, what you're thinking. <laughs> doesn't always work. And by the way, if you're in a Sunday school class, call the members of your Sunday school class and say, I need some help, or I need somebody to pray with me, or just to talk. And you can lift a burden with a visit, or a phone call, or a card. Uh, and burdens are always lighter when they're shared with others. Second thing, if you choose to sin, you're going to bear the consequences of it. Sometimes the burdens we have in life are the results of things we've done. Sometimes the things we carry in life are the results of what someone else did, and it's affecting us. Both of those can be <clears throat> a heavy burden. And then it says in Galatians 6, 5, For each one shall bear his own load. Now that seems like it's a contradiction to what I just was talking about, doesn't it? It seems like a complete contradiction. We've been talking about bearing and carrying one another's burdens and all this. And taking your, your burdens to Calvary. Your burdens are lighter at Calvary and so forth. But when you get to this one, it's talking about if you're voluntarily choosing to commit sin in your life, that one is not supposed to be carried by someone else. There's only one person in the universe who can remove the load of sin. His name is Jesus Christ. I cannot take away the load of your sin, your burden. Why do you have the burden? Because God's trying to get you under conviction so you'll repent from it and come back to Him. So if you want to be free and walk around and have a light life, walk in the light of Jesus Christ and obey Him, okay? <laughs> and so if you're carrying this load, you can't expect somebody else to take your sin. The only one who's the sin bearer, his name is Jesus Christ. So I wasn't talking about sin. I'm give your burden to somebody else. That wouldn't be a good thing to pass on your sin to someone else. Some of us have reasons why we struggle in life. Some of us had a dominating mother, or a father who ignored us, or a parent who fed us oatmeal too early in our development, or a relative who made us play with dollies, or someone who said something unkind about us and it hurt us. And that can get worse than that. It can get really tough when people are suffering in their childhood. And I understand the truth that sometimes our past can affect how we deal with life now, doesn't it? Sometimes what happened before affects how we relate to things now. But, but I also know this, through faith in Jesus Christ, you can have a good life now and you can get free from your past. I ask people who struggle with painful pasts, uh, who might be angry or depressed, discouraged, who have a poor self-image, I ask this question. How long do you want to allow what someone else did to you to continue to control and ruin your life? And I just wait. And then I'll say some other questions that I'm going to do here. When you forgive other people, give the answer. When you forgive other people, you let go of the chains of bondage and of the control that they have in your life. The first question, how long do you want to allow what other people have done to continue to control and ruin your life? Second one is, when you forgive others, you let go of their control in your life. Got it? All right. I ask people these questions, I say, how, <laughs> how would you like to allow what they've done in your life to continue to control and ruin your life for another 10 years? They just say no. 
I say, well, how about if you allow whatever they did to you to continue to control and ruin your life for another five years? Well, no. You know what I'm trying to do, get them to admit it's an issue. And number two, this could go on and on as long as they want to. How about another year? No. Then I ask this question. I say, would you like to get free of your past and get in on the victory that can be yours, is available to you? Well, if they realize it can be 10 years or 5 years or 1 years or, you mean I can get rid of this now? I say, yeah, we can. If you want to work on it, we can do it now. <laughs> it's not constructive to avoid personal responsibility for your own life. If you live your life and you continue to blame your ancestors, your classmates, your family members for what's going on in your life, they are continuing to control you. I'm a very strong-minded person. I do not choose to allow what other people have done or said to continue to control my life except Jesus Christ. I'm glad for His control. But anybody else that's done wicked and unkind things to me in the past, I let it go because I want to be free. I don't want to be under their control domination anymore. Does this all make sense to you? Is this really important for you to understand? That's why forgiveness is so very important for yourself. It's so you can be free and not under the control of others. This would help so many people uh, if they would understand this. Don't live your life as a victim anymore. If that's all you get out of this service today, that is a significant thing. Don't be a victim anymore. God can take your life, any life, and He can make something beautiful out of your life. Give God a chance, but take responsibility and follow the Lord and follow His ways in your life, and He can set you free and break the chains, and you no longer have to live your life under the bondage of what somebody else has said about you, what they call you, what they have done to you in your past, and that could be all kind of horrible things. I say forgive them, and I didn't say that you like it, and I'll say what they did is okay. I'm just saying don't allow them to control you anymore. Not one more hour. That's why we come to the table to remember Jesus took our sin and their sin on himself to cleanse us and to make us new and when he made me new he didn't leave some of the old parts in he completely did a complete makeover on me spiritually leave your burdens with Jesus this is really the truth do not be deceived it says God is not mocked whatever man sows that way, he will also reap he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. He who sows to the Spirit, that's where I'm going, will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. That's what I want, that part. God knows all about our thoughts. He knows about our words. He knows about our actions. He has rewards and he has consequences for our behavior. I would refer, prefer in my own life to get in on the rewards. Would you? I'd rather not live in the consequences of willful rebellion against God. So I'm trying to say to you, there is a fork in the road. There's a choice you got to make. Choose to walk with Jesus and follow Him the rest of the days of your life. And when He says to forgive others who hurt you, forgive them so that you are free to walk with Christ and enjoy your life. And don't carry the burden that somebody else put on you. Another step. Give it away to Jesus. <laughs> Hebrews 9.27 tells us it's appointed unto men to die once and after this the judgment. Well, the judgment for my sin, and if you're a believer for your sin, was already placed on Jesus Christ on the cross. If that were true, we would all be lost today. But He died, He suffered, and He died for you and me to save us from our sin. I've been set free now by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. If you're born again, your salvation is secure in Christ. The Christian sin has already been judged at Calvary. 
but we will give an account for this. How carefully did I live my life for Christ, or was I careless? Did I live my Christian life for Jesus and for God, for others, or did I live my life now for myself? That I will be evaluated on that. If you're born again, you need to listen to what I'm saying and appropriate the new life in Christ and follow Him. If you know you need to be saved today, forgiven of your sin, and you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, then I want you to listen to the still, small voice of God's Spirit say to you, repent from your sin. That means turn away from it. Believe on Jesus. Accept Him as your Savior and Lord and follow Him the rest of your life. So, what should you do with your burdens? Psalm 55, 22 gives us one text that says, cast your burdens on the Lord. And He will do what? He will sustain you. It means He's going to hold you up. He's not going to let you struggle with that load anymore. He'll never permit the righteous to be moved. That means, when I'm in Christ, I am not ashamed to be a child of God. It means I know that I don't deserve it, but I've been forgiven by God's grace through faith in His Son. He has made me into a new creation. And if you're a believer, that's you too. And you know that you're not going to be moved because He's planted my feet on the solid rock, Jesus Christ. I don't deserve that. I, it's not Rick. It's not me because I'm not strong enough to do that. But He is. He can keep me against that day. I'm persuaded of that. And I know He's with me now. And I know He'll never leave me. And He'll never forsake me. And if you're a believer, that's you too. You can stand in your life, not pridefully, but humbly and gratefully. And know that in Christ you are strong. You don't have to apologize for being a child of God or shame of that. There's people that say all kinds of stuff about Christians. Well, they're all wrong. And someday they're going to stand before God and they'll answer for that. In the meantime, I'm trying to win them to Christ. Matthew 28, 11, 28 says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Beautiful text. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. You notice he said, All you who labor and are heavy laden. What that says to me is we will be burdened at times in life. We will be heavy laden in life. There will be things that we feel are just a load we can't carry anymore. But when that happens, he says, I will give you rest if you come to Jesus. Come to me. Come to Jesus. You come to Jesus with your load, which you, will, you and I will have loads from time to time. And you bring it to Him, and He says He will take away all your loads forever. It's not what He said. I'll give you rest. And another thing I want to explain to you, and we're going to close. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. The farmers in those days knew that there was a yoke. It was a double yoke. You put two oxen in it. If you're trying to train a young oxen how to plow, for example, or how to pull a cart, you always yoke them up with the more experienced, stronger ox. In this case, he says, take my yoke upon you. What he means is, come here beside me. I'll pull the load. You walk with me. You come and join me in my yoke, and your burden will be light, because guess who's pulling the load? Jesus Christ. Guess who's showing you the way to go when you're in the yoke with him? He's big enough and strong enough to pull you and keep you going the right way, down the right path. Trust Him. Come to Him. And He says, Learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When you come to Jesus and you just let Him be, you're all in all. You're Lord. You follow Him. You walk with Him. He does. He'll guide you the right way to go. He'll tell you when to stop. He'll give you rest. He carries and does most of the work. We're going with Him in life. That's my choice. I hope it's yours.
trust him. Steve's going to come. He's going to lead us in a song today. My question to you is, do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior and the Lord of your life? If you know Jesus is the Savior and Lord of your life, then I want you to be encouraged to know you can bring all your burdens to Him every time, and you can trust Him. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you need to give your life to Christ. Even today, you can come to Him and ask Him to forgive you, and He will.